Good morning. So years ago, I hosted a Bible study with young junior high girls. And it was basically the gist was reading a chapter and then going around and asking each one what spoke to them. And I always found it amazing that even with a small chapter, that each girl, each out of like 10, would have something different to share. So I'm sure over the last week, different things have jumped out at you. This week, what kind of hit me was in Matthew about forgiveness. And God takes this very seriously. He talks about the king who forgave the man a huge debt, and then that man going out and seeing somebody who owed him just a little bit, and yet he didn't forgive him. And I think about us as believers in Christ, when we said yes to Jesus, we were forgiven our sins from the day we were born till the day we were died, to the day we died, which is a lot. And yet we have a hard time forgiving somebody when they wrong us. And I have a story about that. So years ago, she was um, my best friend. We were doing life together, lots of laughs, lots of tears, talked every day. She was my person, you know, my Christine to my Meredith, Lucy to Ethel. And unfortunately, with a misunderstanding and um, kids involved as well, there was a lot of hurt and anger and unforgiveness on my part. And we separated friendship. Our friendship just went, you know, separated basically. And I hadn't spoken to her in about two or three years, and I accidentally butt dialed her one morning. And I had a new phone, and I was trying to get it turned on and find the password and get to the red button to turn it off before she answered, but I was unsuccessful. And she answers like, hey, like nothing was wrong. And I kind of faked back, oh, sorry, I must have butt dialed you, and I hung up. But all of those old emotions and feelings were just raging inside of me. I obviously had not yet forgiven with my whole heart. And I went swimming that afternoon just to kind of process all this. And I'm talking to Jesus and I'm just telling him, but she did this and she said that and she hurt my child. And, and the, everything I said was just fueling the fire. And then Jesus would say, you need to forgive. If you want to take your next step on your walk with me, if you want to grow in your purpose, you need to forgive. It's written in here. And as I'm going back and forth, the pool guy shows up. Now I'm in this empty Olympic sized pool and he asked me to switch lanes and now I'm mad at him. I'm like, couldn't you start on the other side? And so anyway, all these emotions were just raging inside of my heart. Now during this time, we were doing a Bible study in Ephesians 6, which talks about the armor of God. And that week we were talking about the sword, which is the word of God. And as I'm going back and forth with Jesus, with what she said and what she did, and then him saying, you need to forgive her, something hits me in the head. And it's a teeny tiny plastic sword. And I felt as if Jesus was sitting at the edge of the pool with his feet dangling in the water and saying, Mary Kay, you need to take my sword, which is the word of God, to fight this battle and do what I ask you to do. And the scripture tells us that we need to pray for our enemies. We do need to do anonymous acts of kindness for our enemies. To move forward, we need to forgive with our hearts. And I heard a sermon once saying that looking at somebody that has hurt you with all that rage and anger and resentment and bitterness and revenge is basically like looking at that person and drinking gasoline. You're poisoning yourself. You're doing nothing to the person, poisoning yourself. So after that, I started praying fervently for blessings to be poured on the family, for I started praying for the children. And one day I was actually alone, and as I was praying for the child, tears started dreaming down my face. And Jesus, it was almost audible, said, you're the only person on this planet praying for her. Thank you for loving me more than hating your enemy. So I want to encourage you. I know all of us have been hurt at one time or another, some to very strong degrees. But I want to encourage you to pick up your sword and to say, Jesus, say yes to Jesus. I'm going to love you more than I hate the person. I'm going to pray for them fervently. I'm going to do random acts anonymously. And then that is the recipe for God to begin to heal your heart. The emotions and the feelings might take time, but um, as you walk in obedience to God's word, you will be healed. I love you.